Friday. Hey, we're going we're gonna to worship together this morning. I just want to encourage you and say that right now we're going to focus our eyes on the cross. You know, all throughout uh, the year we focus on Jesus, but this is the day right now where we set our eyes on the cross and we thank him for all that he's done. So I just want to encourage you wherever you're at, wherever you're watching from, we're going to enter into a time of worship. Maybe you want to close your eyes, bow your head, lift your hands up. I'm just going to pray and then join with us. Lord, we thank you that you are here in our midst. We thank you for the cross. We thank you that you died for us and that you rose again. Thank you for that sacrifice, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. 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 Blessed assurance Jesus is mine a foretaste of glory divine an heir of salvation a purchase of God a born of his spirit washed in his blood submission all is at rest I and my Savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking up His goodness lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Hold you, you 
are victorious. Praise to the risen King. And oh, what a Savior, wonderful Jesus. Oh, How good is that? Live worship, Good so Friday. Yeah. Here we are. It's Easter wow. weekend. Hey, let's just pray. Mm -hmm. uh, let's focus our hearts and our attention on Jesus. Uh, yeah. That's what Easter weekend's all about. If you're watching, if you're new, I want to invite you to join us in this prayer. Uh, we're about to take communion today, so hopefully you're ready to do that. Uh, some people might need to scramble a little bit just to get some bread and some juice together. Uh, but we're doing this to remember what Jesus did for you and I, right. what Jesus did for us on the cross, and uh, this is a very special day, Good mm -hmm. Friday. Father, we just thank you so much for what you did on the cross, mm -hmm. that you left your place in heaven mm -hmm. and you came down as a humble, <laughs> Jesus, mm -hmm. you came down as a humble servant, Lord mm -hmm. God, to lay your life down to serve us. Uh, you didn't have to. Uh, it was undeserving uh, for like to die, to pay the price, to stand in the gap for sinful humanity. But we just thank you and praise you that you did this. And, uh, you know, to, it shouldn't be on us to think about this just when we take communion, but it should be the front of our mind uh, all the time. It should be the gratitude that comes from our lips. It should be our daily prayer to thank you uh, for laying your life down, paying the price, the ultimate price that we could never pay. Uh, to atone for our sin, that we could be in right relationship with God. It's something to celebrate and it's something to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So we thank you that we're joining around that here. Amen. 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 So people, you want to say hi yeah. to everybody? People so, can get connected. So, so good that you guys are here with us online right now for Good Friday. Yeah. What a fun way to celebrate Come together on. with communion and everything. And you know what? Maybe you're joining in with friends and family. Maybe you've never joined into one of our services before. We do have a Connect card uh, that's online. Our hosts are putting up a little link now that you can click on. And we do this every week and we have lots of great right. things happening during the week. So we want to make sure that this is something that you're into that you can find connection and find some people to do life with. So That's yeah. right. So fill out one of those Connect cards mm -hmm. and, and we want to make sure that you get engaged in the life of the church. And I have right. a story actually yeah. of somebody that did just that. They, right. uh, they worked really hard to get connected in the church, even through the COVID season. I know that we're facing uh, just fresh restrictions. I don't know how else to say it, uh, but in Toronto, if you're living in, in Toronto, if you're tuning in from anywhere local, that it can feel like daunting and it can feel like it takes, uh, like when is this ever gonna change and like how, how are people getting connected? But this story is a guy by the name of George who, uh, he, he kind of grew up around church, uh, and I believe this story is going to really encourage you because he, he knew of God, but then went through like an absolutely heartbreaking uh, season around about 2018 to 2020 and just found himself lost, wondering, and, and uh, trying to find some sense of hope and some sense of life. And so just through searching online, found C3 Toronto in the middle of covid which is really quite, I find these stories remarkable. What normally would be something that you would just expect and take for granted. This is the miracles of Jesus. Right. And so mm -hmm. not only that, he, he, goes, he, he checks out the service straight after, post-Lobby Vibes. We do this every week. He, he needed some personal prayer and we offer that 
after our services every single Sunday. And uh, he went and joined Jojo uh, and prayed together uh, straight after the service. And they spent some time in prayer. Jojo wanted to point him to next steps. And so next steps is how we connect people into the life of the church and give people what their next step is. And it's just incredible to see this little progression happen uh, in this uh, man's life, in George's mm-hmm. life, to right. see God moving, to use what we're doing over media like this and to see miracles happen. But the story doesn't end there. So out of Next Steps, he gets encouraged by the campus pastors, meets Pastor Jerry, Pastor Greg and the gang, and, and then uh, gets encouraged to join a connect group. And he does that. He did it like straight away. It wasn't like, you That's know, awesome. this was someone <laughs> seeking and needing, uh, hoping God, then connects into a connect group, meets Luke and Mike Mazzucchi, Zicardo, otherwise known as Eminem, and, uh, <laughs> no, and me, so it meets Luke and Mike, and they just connect him in, and then so he starts finding community out of this connect group, and after a while, Mike Mazzucardo just really encouraged him, uh, listen, you know, I know you're new, I know you've just recently given your life to Christ, and I know you, that you've only been in our church for a number of months, but Mike encourages him, listen, don't let you be the end of this story, why don't you consider Great. running a connect group for yourself and yeah. that's exactly what George so did good. even just new to our church through the last 12 months has started his own connect group called the Easty Boys which is awesome <laughs> and uh, and now just feels that this has been he said he said this is in his words this is a string of miraculous moments wow. and and so he has just found new life in the church in community even during lockdowns. And I just wanted to tell that story because I really believe that it would encourage someone out there that just feels isolated. Mm. You feel like, man, I don't know if there's hope. I don't know uh, what to do in my current uh, space and navigating this lockdown and everything. But I I know that if you step out, that we have a people and an amazing community that want to get you connected. Uh, They want to connect you in and, uh, and really help with your life, Mm -hmm. pray with you, walk with you, and all the rest of it. So God bless you, do that. Uh, Reach out to us if you need to get connected. I'm just gonna welcome our family in because we're gonna take communion. His little, oh, (laughs) Bobby. Okay, everybody, this is is Noah. This is Kenzie, why don't you guys say hi? Hi. Look over at that camera, (laughs) hi. And this is Ayla, you blow everyone a kiss, go nah. (laughs) <laughs> okay, okay. We're, we're gonna take communion together. So it's awesome. Yeah, Good Friday is such a beautiful, special day where we get to remember what Jesus did on the cross for us. And so I'm actually gonna read a scripture together now. It might be one that you've heard before, or maybe not. But um, it's in Matthew 26, verse 26, and it's speaking about uh, the Last Supper, which is just before Jesus goes to die on the cross. It's one of the last. Uh, things, one of the last things that he does. And it's significant because it's something that he wants us to remember. So in verse 26, it says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, which we're going to do in a little bit. And, uh, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. And then in 27, it says, then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it. All of you, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So this is this beautiful uh, passage where Jesus is giving us symbols of hope, symbols of what he is about to do on the cross. And in this moment, it probably wouldn't have made a lot of sense to the disciples. They may have known it kind of in theory, like, I guess, yeah, he's kind of going to die on the cross and come back to life, but it didn't make complete sense because they hadn't seen it yet in that moment. And yet Jesus says to do this in thankfulness and in remembrance. And so he's asking them in that moment, look back at how thankful, at how much I've already done in thankfulness and in gratitude, but also look forward in what I'm about to do because that's even more powerful. And I feel like this relates so much to this season. I mean, every Easter we get to celebrate what he did on the cross because he did then go ahead, die on the cross, defeated death, came back to life. And that's the celebration and that's the hope that we get to look forward to in Christ. But right now in this season, especially as what Pastor Sam was saying, we're heading into another lockdown. We don't know the uncertainty that's ahead of us. We, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know the circumstances in your life, but I do know that there is hope 
in Jesus. I do know that as we take communion, we can remember what he has done, what he did on the cross for us, what he's already done in our lives. Maybe he's already come through in incredible, miraculous ways. And we can look back we can thankful, we can be thankful, we can look back in gratitude, but we can also look forward because we don't know how the circumstances are going to sort out. We don't know what's going to happen, but we do know that Jesus has it, that it's in his hands, that there is hope in him. So no matter what you're facing right now, as we take communion together as a church, as a family, Let's focus in thankfulness looking back and let's also focus in hope looking forward because he has this. So, Amen. awesome. So why don't you, wherever you're at, grab some bread, some juice, whatever you have yeah. and let's take communion together. We can together. take communion together and we've got another song uh, while we do that. Yeah, let's actually, let's pray. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Alright, let's pray guys. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you, your body was broken and your blood was spilt to uh, heal us, to wash us, to cleanse us so that, so that our bodies uh, can be made whole in you, that our spirits can be made right before you, Lord God. So we remember this, we recognize this, and we thank you for it. Amen.
heart of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. we got a chance to do that and I just pray that and believe that the Holy Spirit is really touching your heart right now and I have the honour and privilege of uh, telling you and introducing that Pastor Phil Pringle, the founder and leader of C3 Church all around the world, has brought an Easter message for us this Easter. I believe that this message is very timely, uh, all things considered, especially that we are in lockdowns and we are un in unprecedented times. And so why don't you just uh, obviously keep watching and really enjoy this message, this Easter message from Pastor Phil Pringle. AC3 family, what a pleasure to be sharing with you on this beautiful Easter weekend. And as we've entered into 2021, I believe that the resurrection is more important than any other time. I mean, Jesus died on Good Friday so that we could get rid of all our negativity. And then, and sins and sicknesses and demons and all the things that are going to destroy us. And on the third day, on Resurrection Day, He rose from the dead in new life. In fact, He was unrecognizable, even by the people who had walked with Him for three years. And I believe that whenever somebody comes to Jesus and they discover the, the Jesus who rose from the dead, they're going to be unrecognizable. People will say, man. What's happened to you? Things have changed. In fact, the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, they're a brand new creation. Old things are passed away. Everything becomes new. And I believe that when we come to Christ, that should be our experience. We are born again. And if you've never done that, good friend, I'd, I'd love to have you say a prayer at the end of this message and ask Jesus to come into your life and have that transformation that only He can bring. We can try in all sorts of ways to transform ourselves, but without Him, it's very, very difficult. Let me tell you this, the greatest transformation I think that all of us could do with right now in the world is the transformation from despair to hope. For many people who are struggling financially, struggling in their jobs, struggling in their health, struggling in any area of isolation and relationships, there's hope. God comes into your world and He brings hope. And Easter is all about hope. It's all about there may be death on, on Friday, but there's resurrection on Sunday. There's weeping in the night, but there's joy in the morning. There's a storm on the lake now, but we get to the other side because Christ is in the boat. God is always the God of hope. There's no situation that is too final and disastrous that there isn't some way through it. God has always got a way through to the other side. He is called the God of hope. Romans 15 verse 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to have an abundance of hope and it comes into your heart through the Holy Spirit as you read the Word of God and you see those powerful promises of God speaking life and faith into you, you know that there's hope. The future is not just dark and black. The future is not a blank canvas either. It is full of hope for anybody who's in despair or discouragement today. 
Acts 2.26 says, this is Jesus. This, these are His words. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope. He is saying this when He's on the cross. He is saying this when He is crucified and people are mocking Him, spitting on Him, a spear going through His side. He is saying, my flesh will rest in hope. He can't do a thing. How bad is it when you get to a moment in your life and you can't do anything? There's just nothing you can do to try and bring change or, I mean, we do all we can do, but there are times when it's beyond us. And that's where Jesus was. And so He said, I'm just going to rest and hope. I trust God. Somehow He'll get me out of this situation. And you've got to admit, none of us have been in that situation. Nothing as bad as that. But He said, somehow I'm going to get out of this. Somehow I'm going to get through this. And He did. He said in Acts 2 verse 27, He knew the nature of God. And he said, you will not leave my soul in hell. God will not leave you in hell. He will not leave you. He will not abandon you, forsake you, and leave you on your own. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. It's not like I'm going to be left here to die. God's gone. He said, no, I know you, Lord. You will rescue me. You'll get me through this. So... If we are today feeling like people have wounded us, they've crucified us, killed us, put us in a hole in the ground, put us through hell, God is determined to not leave us in that situation. That is what Easter tells us, that God is interested in you and I not being left in darkness, not being left in the pit. If we give Him our lives and trust ourselves to Him, He will deliver us. Our hope is based on the fact that God is good. God is good. He is not evil. He is not capricious. He is not bad. The book of Hebrews says Jesus is the perfect example of God on on the earth. So if we want to know what God is like, we just need to look at Jesus. And I can't find one time Jesus making anyone sick. He only ever healed them. There's not one time that He killed anybody. He only brought people back to life. Remember, Jesus is the perfect expression of God in the earth. It's like He was a hologram of God in the earth. Not once does He cause a person to have an accident, and nor does He cause an earthquake where people are killed. He doesn't make anybody poor. He doesn't tell anybody, you go be poor. He doesn't refuse food to the hungry. He never rejects one person who comes to Him. He doesn't say, no, go away. You're rejected. One woman who came to Him felt Him push back, but she kept pushing in and eventually He said, wow. And He knew she could take that. He knew that He could stir greater faith in her. And she kept coming. Even if you are feeling like things aren't happening, any trial is designed to strengthen you, not weaken you. It's designed to make you successful, not a failure. A trial is not, is not from God to, to snuff you out. It's to make you rise. To say, I got hope our God is going to get us through. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know who. But somehow, God is going to make a way where there is no way. You never find people, God, Jesus pronouncing judgment on people who came to Him. But you do tell... You do find Jesus telling people their future with hope. You do find Jesus telling people who they are and what He's going to do with them. You are Peter, on you I'm going to build my church. You are Nathaniel, in whom is no guile. And and so He's able to actually, with insight, look into people's lives and give them good news about their future. So He comes to deliver people from their problems deliver people from their sins, their demons, their troubles, and set them free. That is what Jesus did, and that is what God is. So you can trust Him that He is going to get you through whatever darkness you're in right now. In the Old Testament, there was a 
big problem. It was a valley and it was full of dry, dead, parched bones. They're obviously just, just a pile of bones. And when you looked at them, you couldn't see any op- uh, possibility. They had no opportunity, but God did. He said, he said to his prophet Ezekiel, do you think that and I can do anything with this? Do you think these bones can live? Do you think I can bring order out of the mess? Do you think I can bring life out of the death? Do you think I can turn these bones into an army? Ezekiel, he, he didn't have the faith for that. He said, Lord, you know whether you can do this or not. Ezekiel 37 verse 11 tells us why they were in that state. They indeed say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Okay, so we're dry. We don't have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We've lost hope. As soon as hope drains from our mind and from our eyes, we are in an extremely vulnerable position. Depression, discouragement, disillusionment, leading to anxiety and and deeper depression and even suicide. That condition is rampant around the world today. Suicide is fast becoming the leading cause of death in many countries. And, And it is a tragedy that here today, People are ignoring God in heaven, who is the source of hope. And this message is so very important for you and I and the whole world today. I've written a book called Hope. And if you wanted to, you know, just reach out and give that to somebody, if you write to us, uh, we'll be able to send it to you. But I am believing that we can bring hope into people's lives at every level in social media, through messages like this, through books, through whatever way we can, that people can reach out, feel a little faith in their heart and connect themselves with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. So they said our bones are dry. We've had no sustenance, no life coming into us. Our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off. Isolation is a terrible way for humans to live. All of us need emotional bonding. We need good feelings between ourselves as children, adults, parents, husbands, wives, because in that place, we are made whole. We are completed. But when we feel cut off, not only from one another, but also from God, we find ourselves in an extremely barren, depressed situation. We're in a valley. And that's where these bones were, in a valley of depression. I think personally, the reason that they were in a valley as a pile of dry bones is that they were so depressed, they stopped making decisions. They, they stopped walking. They stopped taking steps. And so they stopped in the valley and died. But David says in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil because you are with me. He he made a decision. I'm going to keep walking through whatever valley I find myself in. I'm going to keep taking steps. I'm not just going to sit down and give up. I'm going to take another step. And if your first step today is to make the decision to receive Jesus, please do that today. Just reach out. I'm deciding I'm going to have Christ in my life and I'm going to start following him. I'm going to start giving my life, my agenda into His hands and do what He tells me to do. I'm going to live the ways that He has described in Scripture. I am committing myself to Christ. Even if you did it once and you fell away, come back to Him today. Make that decision at the end of this message. As I finish, I just want to talk about one last Scripture where you and I can know without any shadow of a doubt that God is on our side. And Jeremiah 29 verse 11 in the message says, I know what I'm doing. This is what God, this is God saying, I know what I'm doing. And it can seem like, has God lost control of planet Earth? I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. 
plans to give you a future and to give you hope. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. I'll turn things around for you. What an incredible verse. So in every one of our lives, there's an area that's turned around the wrong way, that's facing downwards. Everyone, for some of us, it may be feeling like our whole life, but for others, it may be our finances, it may be our marriage, it may be our family life, it may be whatever it is. The Lord says, listen, I'm good. I'm on your side and I'll turn things around for you. It can be difficult getting to that point, getting to that part where the blessing of God overwhelms everything else that's come against us. But it finally came to Jesus Christ on the third day. It was tough going through the the day before His crucifixion. Tough, obviously, extremely tough through the prayer and then the in the Garden of Gethsemane and then being crucified, being tried, being mocked, being rejected. Just extreme pain and anguish that is too, beyond our understanding. But he went through that to get to his resurrection. He went to hell to defeat the devil in a massive battle, rage, raging and waged in the, in the corridors of darkness finally emerging victorious with the keys of hell and death, resurrected with a new body so that you and I could not just die, but be resurrected from the dead to live in eternal life with Him. That was the final purpose and intention of God through sending Jesus to earth. And so I'm praying for you right now that Christ would come into your heart because you invite Him in and that you live for Him as a follower of Jesus Christ. Happy Easter, my friends. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Awesome. So if that's you, if you are here today and that message spoke to you and you want to invite Jesus into your heart, either, and I'll put the invitation out, either for if you want to do it for the first time or you uh, know that your life isn't right with God and you need to recommit your life to Jesus, I'm telling you what Pastor Phil preached, that there is hope found in Jesus. In fact, Jesus is our only true source of hope. So if that's you, what we're going to do is we're going to pray a prayer together. Uh, And I want you to indicate to us that you are one of those people uh, that are either accepting Jesus for the first time this Easter in 2021, or you're recommitting your life to Jesus. Uh, I want you to indicate to us by just clicking the I raise my hand button on the side in the chat. And so if that's you, let's, let's pray together as a community. Say, Dear Jesus, I thank you that hope is in you. I thank you that you've forgiven me of my sin. Make me new right now and help me follow you as my Saviour and my Lord. In your name, Jesus, I accept this message. Amen. Amen. I believe there is a party in heaven right now celebrating your name, celebrating the fact that you have invited God into your heart. You've invited Jesus into your heart. This is a very critical moment for you. And I I really want to encourage you to reach out to the church just like George did in that story. I want you to, you can uh, ask for prayer in the chat, uh, but you can just go to our website and, uh, and get in touch uh, with someone from our church and we'll, and we'll tell you what the next steps are. Uh, so it's Pastor Sam and Jess here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just, uh, we're excited because yeah. in a couple of days time. Yeah, we've got Easter Sunday. We're so glad that you tuned in with us today. And Easter Sunday is coming up. We've got our two services. 9 o'clock and 10.30. Right, right. Yes. Yep. And it is going <laughs> to be, be all great. time. We're doing yep. some stuff that uh, has never been done before. And it's going to be a very special mm-hmm. Easter Sunday yeah, you celebration. You do not want to miss it. So 
go out, get your chocolate, do your Easter egg hunts and everything around your house today and tomorrow, and then tune in on Sunday. Awesome, guys. We'll see you. Happy Easter. Bye.